Hey guys, here are my 10 cards, one kit for flavor, uh, scrapping for less, flavor of the month, April card kit, which the theme is the colors of spring. If you haven't checked out the unboxing, do that because this kit's quite um, a little bit different than kits I usually do. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. This is from the collection one, and I'm just kind of unloading the ingredients or the contents that come in this collection. I'm going to use this sketch sheet for four of the cards for my 10 cards, and I kind of pointed out what I'm using for this card, for card one, as my inspiration as far as a layout. Like I said, the unboxing will be below, um, not below, but will be below, but I'll also link it above as well if you just want to click on that and at the end, just so you can see what exactly comes in the kit. Um, I was asked to be guest designer, so it was really exciting to work with a different kit, just to kind of show you guys what um, what kits are out there. And if you're new to the channel, definitely check out my other videos. I do quite a bit of kits and do the 10 cards one kit with those kits. So if you are crazy about kits like me, hopefully you can find find some new inspiration if you are new. There is a blog hop going on, so definitely I do have a blog post for this kit, so definitely go check that out. All appropriate links will be below. So I've gone ahead and stamped out my sentiment here. All the pattern paper and the cardstock in this card you see come in the kit. And each little piece of the collections, there's um, four different collections, but then you get an extra one if you get the bigger package of a kit. And like I said, the unboxing will explain that all. So each one comes with a stamp set. And I tried to make two cards. I didn't try, I did. <laughs> I made two cards out of each collection. So again, this is collection one and my first card. And I kept it simple. I really like that sentiment. To enjoy the rainbow, you must. we must endure the rain. And I just wanted that to be the main focal point. And then I added some sequins, and that completes card one. So for card two, again, I'm using collection one. And I'm using the stamp set that came in the collection. It's this really cute pink and main raining frogs. And I stamped this image out with my... Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, and I'm just using my Spectrum Noir markers, and the paper I stamped it on is Spectrum Noir cardstock. I kept the coloring really simple. I'm not an expert at coloring, and especially when I'm doing 10 cards, one kit, I keep it really simple since there are, it's a lot of work to make all these cards. I don't want to spend a lot of time coloring. So add a little bit of shading, but it's very subtle, probably unnecessary, you can't really tell. Go ahead and color my little frog. And then I will fussy cut him out once I am done. And then finish his little rain jacket up. And here's the pattern paper I used that came in the collection. I just, I've already trimmed it up. So the video is not as long. You don't need to watch me cut paper. Go ahead and add some ribbon. This ribbon is from my stash. Most of the ribbon I use in this kit is from my stash. There's some little bit of twine that comes in one of the collections, but other than that, if you see ribbon, it's from my stash, which I have a ton of, so it's nice to kind of use it up. I went ahead and used a rectangle stitch die to cut out this green pattern paper. These little doilies came in the kit as well. Go ahead and stay. I stamped my sentiment already on the natural cardstock that came in the kit, and I just adhere it to the doily. I used a circle stitch die to, to cut that out. Add some dimensionals to the frog and the doily, and then I'll go ahead and pop those up onto my card. They came with these little clothespins. I popped one up there, but didn't like the way it looked. 
So I took it off and I go ahead and use the same ribbon to tie a bow and just attach it next to the frog there. And then I do add some Nouveau glitter using this glitter pen. It's just clear glitter. And that completes that card. So for card three, I'm now using collection two and that came in the kit. So different ingredients. I'm using one of those, what are they called? Sketches. I'm taking these little bunnies and these bunnies are from Lawn Fawn. No. It is... Spring Greetings by Sunny Studio. So I stamped out the bunnies. And I'm using my Spectrum, I'm sorry, no, my Zig markers. And I'm using a Zig blender pen just to blend them out. These bunnies I wanted pretty much to look white, but with a little hint of gray, and their ears are a little pink. It doesn't show up too well on the camera, but. And the stamp set was a exclusive for Scrapping for Less. Spring Greetings by Sunny Studio. So it also came with the perfectly plaid Spring by Lawn Fawn, the pattern paper. So I'm kind of adhering those according to the sketch. These are some peel-offs that I had in my stash, and I will go ahead and adhere those. I don't like, I like to cover or border the seams where like pattern paper meets like this, these two pieces with something. I just feel like it looks unfinished if I don't. That's just me. So I am adding these peel-offs because it just kind of finishes it off. And it also adds a little sparkle. Just trim up the edges. And then I've taken another piece of pattern paper. I used a square stitch die to cut that out. And then I'm going to go ahead and adhere that down. Adhere my bunnies down. This card is quite simple, but nothing wrong with that. And then I stamp out a sentiment and then I cut it, trim it up and use a banner stitch die. No, I don't. I don't use a banner stitch die. What am I talking about? I just cut it out and put a fishtail on it. <laughs> use some Stampin' Dimensionals, Spring Greetings, and pop that up. And I hear that down. And then I do add some sequins. And each little collection came with a sequin pack, with the exception of the last collection, which is the fifth collection, which is the Banana Split. So you can get Double Dip Sunday or Banana Split. Double Dip Sunday has four different collections, and then the Banana Split is one, like, bonus collection. And like I said, if you watch the unboxing, I explain it in there if you're not familiar with uh, Scrapping for Lessons kits. So for the next card, I am kind of just putting some pieces together. Um, the pattern paper came in the kit. This is a piece of white cardstock from my stash. I'm adhering down. The ribbon is from my stash. And I went ahead and used the pink pattern paper that came in the kit, the plaid, and I cut out um, scallop circle, scalloped edge circles, and then I used a smaller circle stitch die to cut out the solid pink. And here I'm just layering them up. This collection came with these wood butterflies and there's also a leaf and something else maybe two leaves but it came with the three butterflies and I go ahead and attach those circle pieces attach this to my card base and then I adhere the little butterflies with some glue these wood little icons you can color with alcohol markers to make them any color you want you could add Nouveau drops on them if you want them to have like a even more dimension. There's a lot you can do with these wood pieces. I really like them and I like when they're included in kits because they just add a special touch, I think. Um, I'm a big fan of them. But I personally, I like to keep them just the natural color, the wood color. So I go ahead and adhere those down. 
And then I go ahead and tie a bow with that same ribbon and then adhere that bow down. And then here is my sentiment. And for my sentiment, I added a piece of green glitter paper from my stash. Just a little sliver of that under spring greetings just to give it some sparkle. And then I add some more sequins because why not? <laughs> and these sequins are matte, so there's no sparkle to them, which is nice sometimes. The glitter paper is sparkle enough for this card. So that completes that card. For the next collection, this is the collection three, kind of just showing you what comes in it. I stamped out this girl image. This is Stamping Bella, Tiny Towny Daffodil Girl. And I stamped her out on some Bristol Smooth cardstock using my Versafine Onyx Black ink, and I'm just quickly coloring her with my Zig markers. Nothing fancy. Um, I do use two, her and another girl, and I just show you the coloring of this one. The other girl I use, I colored in various yellows. This one, of course, that I'm showing on camera, becomes a huge mess. Um, the blender pen right here, I, if you've been following me for a while, I use it occasionally. It's not necessarily something I like. I, would I recommend it? No, but I have it, so I use it because I ordered one, but they sent me like a pack of 10. I don't even know if that was supposed to be it or that was by mistake. So I use it, but you have to be careful because it will make your paper pill like crazy, which you can see here. That dress has mega texture. <laughs> so even though the blender pen causes all that pilling, it also picks it up really nicely. So I'm kind of going through with the blender pen and kind of scooping up those pieces where the paper is totally torn apart. But once the card, once the girl's colored, it looks fine. All that pilling has been cleaned up and it's totally fine. So here's the yellow one I covered up, uh, I covered up, no, I colored off camera. Um, I thought she would look better with the purple than the purple, just to kind of give it a little bit of extra or um, different color contrast. So I decided to make a shaker card and I've gone ahead and used a circle die to cut off this circle of the pattern paper that came in this collection. I add my piece of acetate and then here I'm adding my little adhesive strips to, the adhesive foam strips to the outer, to the circle. And then I add the adhesive foam strips all over the card. So it is obviously level with that circle piece. Here I go ahead and add my sequins. And this, these sequins came in the kit as well. I'm going to remove the backing from my foam strips. And the pattern paper, the floral, is Bundles of Blossoms by My Favorite Things, if you were wondering. Go ahead and pop my card base on there, flip it over, and hope for the best. Not too bad. I used some stamp dimensionals to pop the girl up, and I'm going to go ahead and adhere her down. And I add some sparkle to her little dress. And then here is a stamp set that actually came in the Banana Split collection. And this is um, Spring Bloom by Scrapping for Less and Brutus Monroe. So I did bring that in for this collection since that stamp set did not have a sentiment piece to it. Go ahead and trim it up. I do adhere it to this ribbon that's kind of burlap ribbon that came from my stash. Pop that up and then go ahead and adhere this down to the card base. And then there's this twine that came in the kit and I just tie a bow. The twine really doesn't match the burlap, so I don't know if I would do this again, but I went ahead and tied the bow and stuck it up there just to give it a little something extra. And here I'm just fixing, that sentiment was crooked. I don't even know if I ever fixed it to get it straight, but 
kept fiddling with it, but then that completes that card. So for card six, here is a piece of fun foam that's sparkly. I cut out using a die. And then these little polka dot papers. They're three color, I got three colors of foil dotted cardstock. They're just card front panels. And I'm gonna use the green one to go with the purple girl. And I'm using some ribbon from my stash that's green and just kind of wrapping it around my panel. I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to my card base. And then I adhere that fun foam glitter piece to the center. using double-sided tape. I usually have pretty good luck with double-sided tape and fun foam. Sometimes fun foam won't stick to things. Um, it'll stick, but if you go to peel it off, it'll come right off. So it's not very secure. Go ahead and pop the girl up with some Stampin' Dimensionals. Adhere her down. And then for my, well, I do tie a bow that I stick to the side there, kind of haphazardly, but looks cute anyway. So this is a piece of purple cardstock from my stash, and I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss my sentiment, which is happy birthday, with white embossing powder, and I'm stamping it with Versamark. This pattern, this piece of paper is really cheap, and if you notice, the discoloring that my glue gun did, and I don't hold my glue gun to it long. I mean, once it's melted, I move on, but it discolored this paper, so be careful if you're using the cheapo cardstock. Go ahead and add some sequins. These are kind of unique sequins. They're the little swirly looking pattern that I used for the shaker card. So here is the collection four. And I did all the coloring off screen. So this video wasn't too long. It comes with the uh, crocus Droplet by Stampendous, the sweet little image of the mouse and the flower, the crocus. It came with Doodlebug, Thinking of You sticker sheet, which I did not use, but a good stash builder. Vintage Bliss by Simple Stories is the pattern paper. So I adhered two pieces of pattern paper and my little stamp that I colored off screen. Wonky, and then the Doris Yellow Pattern Washi Tape. Um, came in my kit. If you get the kit, the pattern of washi tape could vary. So I stuck it on there like somebody stuck a picture on something and I'm like, well, let me try you to use the rest of this twine. And I kind of tie it in the corner there, trying something different. It was a little difficult, but I got it to work. I add some scotch tape just to make sure it stays adhered. Add some Stampin' Dimensionals and Lightning Speed. <laughs> adhere this to my card base. Add some glue dots under that twine to make sure it's nice and secure and doesn't budge on me. And then I will tie a bow with the remaining twine and adhere it on top of that strip. Like so. And I decide to not add a sentiment. I do add more washi tape, and I wish I didn't, but the good thing about washi tape, you can peel it right off. So I probably will go back and peel these two extra pieces off. I'm not sure to go back and look at it. Sometimes it looks better the next day. <laughs> I do decide to go ahead and add a sentiment to this one, actually. Um, and it says, Hoppy Spring. Happy Spring, not Hoppy. Oh, my gosh. Happy Spring. Um, so in the next card, I'm using this sketch at the bottom. However, I'm not using the circle. I'm going to use where the circle would have been. I'm going to use a square. And this is the card I, I don't add a sentiment to. So I take that wood panel pattern paper that came in this little collection. Adhere this pink paper that came in that as well. Kind of at a wonky angle. Trim it up. And then I add my colored image that I colored off screen to the panel add this to my card base and then the sketch had little 
banner dies, little pennant dies coming from the top left hand corner. So here are mine and I just used three of the pieces of pattern paper. Cut them at different sizes, fishtailed the edge and then adhered them to each other according to the sketch. And then I go ahead and adhere this on my card base, trim it up at the top. And then I go ahead and add a few of the flower sequins that came in this collection just at the top since I don't have a sentiment. You can always add a sentiment to the card later or leave it as is, which is kind of nice. So for card nine, I'm using this bottom right hand sketch. Here are the pieces of pattern paper. This card nine and 10 are from the banana split. So if you get the whole shebang of the kit, the banana split is included. Um, this pattern paper that I'm using is from a previous one of the previous collections under the Double Dip Sunday collection. I know that probably sounds really confusing, but like I said, if you watch the unboxing, it'll make complete sense. So what was cool about the banana split is that typically you get a um, ink pad. But with this one, for this month, you get the Celery Green Watercolor by Avery L, which I've never used. So I'm just kind of playing around with it. I um, these like embossed two panels of embossed white cardstock the one I'm using now and another one have a pattern on it so if you do ink blending you'll get that embossed resist with the circles polka dots in this one but I'm like let me see how it works with the watercolor and it worked out fine so the polka dots came through and they kind of have a sheen to them kind of did some ink smushing and so here's some ribbon from my stash that I'm just tying around the sketch did have a bow on it, so this is what I'm doing here. I've already stamped my sentiment, which when I completed the card, there was no need for me to wrap the ribbon around the panel because this covers it and then the bow will cover it, so whatever. Um, I'm using this Bloom Where You Were Planted stamp, which comes in the Banana Split collection, if you went for the bigger collection. Adhere that bow. And then that completes. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I had this Lawn Fawn Spring Sprig dye. And so I sprayed my watercolor paper. This is just plain old water watercolor paper. And I dropped some of the watercolor on there. And I'm just kind of smooshing it around with my paintbrush. And then I use the die cut to cut out these sprigs from that panel of watercolor paper I did. And I'm just going to tuck three or four of them behind the sentiment so it went with that sketch. I've seen some inspiration. If you follow, go and follow the blog hop that some people made wreaths out of that little sprig die, which is pretty cool. So I'm taking this strip of white cardstock for card 10. and I'm going to heat emboss this flower. And this flower comes in the stamp set that um, the Spring Bloom by Scrapping for Less and Brutus Monroe stamp set. It's the same stamp set that has that bloom where you were planted sentiment. So I'm taking this rose gold embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp. This is actually the first time I used it. And I heat emboss those three flowers and I do fussy cut them. This panel you just saw me adhere down, you can notice that there's an, a pattern to it. And again, if you do ink blending, that pattern will pop up and show up really nicely. But I decided to just keep this card really clean. So I just detach it to my card base. I attach some of that pattern paper to my card base, kind of wonky. Here's my sentiment I'm going to throw down, which I adhered to glitter cardstock from my stash. It's purple, just to give it a little peak of sparkle. And then I take these three flowers that I heat embossed and cut out, and I just tuck them behind the sentiment. And this makes for a really clean, simple card. And those flowers actually go really nicely with the pattern paper. And then that will complete this card. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will have still shots of each of the little collections that come in the kit. Definitely go check out the unboxing if you were watching this first, just so you can kind of get an understanding of how the kits work from Scrapping for Less. Um, I want to thank them for inviting me to be guest designer this month. It was a lot of fun to work with the kit. I've been uh, watching others work with the kit and I always found it very interesting how the kit was set up and a lot of fun. So let me know if you have any questions. Links will be below to the Blog Hop and Scrapping for Less's website. And let me know what your favorite card was. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.